Welcome everybody to um, the Finance Committee meeting. First item 153, apologies, I'm busy to elect a chair. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry it's been in three. Could, as uh, in the absence of Councillor Rick Stevens, the chair of this committee, could I have a proposal for somebody to chair the meeting? Sophie. I'm second that. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Apologies have been received from Councillor Rick Stevens and Councillor Rachel Flood. Both have been accepted. Thank you. Item 154, declarations of interest. To receive any declarations of interest in accordance with the requirements of the Localism Act of 2011 and to consider any requests for dispensations in respect of pecuniary or non pecuniary interest in agenda items. Thank you. 155 minutes of the previous meeting to resolve to approve the notes for the meeting on the 7th of March 2022 as the So we don't need to sign those anymore. Can can I, they're okay. Can I just make a comment? Yes. I wasn't at that meeting. Can I still vote? Because if not, you can't. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? I suppose we, we I've have, read them. But yeah, you, you can't agree that they're a true record, no, but then we can't agree them. So, what do you want to do? Can we agree them at full council? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be a pain, it's just I didn't want to. Yes, I'll propose to be a pain. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree. Um, Right, item 156, transactions for payments. <coughs> so, have we got 10 items that we would like to review? I've got some. Okay. Um, the repairs to the chainsaw and, and that's from Chandler's, £30.14. Um, it wasn't the chainsaw, it was the pole pruner. Okay, it's just that it said and? Yes, it and, yeah. does, yeah. It was the pole pruner and no, no, no it wasn't. It was the strimmer, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the strimmer. <laughs> um, it had, they'd, main, um, they'd carried out routine maintenance and it needed to be. Super, yeah. I just didn't think chainsaw would have been used. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Mm. Do you want me to carry on? Yeah, carry <laughs> on. Go for it. Okay. Um, the building works, okay, limited for 350. That is the hatch in the hallway here. Lovely. Yeah. I just wondered what it was. Um, also, Herco noted locks and keys sixty five pounds. Um for the replacement lock for the new assistant clerk's office because the previously the door didn't lock. So. Oh okay, yeah. I just I thought we'd had we've got ample locks and keys and I just thought, oh okay, I just we'll check that one. Are you open to carry on? Yeah, you carry on. Um <clears throat> just one of the um training seminars. So we had two there. Mm -hmm. On the same day, is that two participants? Forty-five pounds. And to note that it wasn't; they weren't on the same day. It's just they invoiced them on the same day. Okay. Um, one was myself doing the allotment training, and yeah. um, one was Councillor Rick Stevens doing cemeteries training. Mm -hmm. so is that two separate ones? Yeah. Asking about? yeah. It was only because it had the same date on it. Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to make sure it was duplicate. Um, Money soft limited, so five pounds. That is the annual fee for the um, PAYE um, program, which is run wages. Okay. That's not something that's included in the new software system. Well, they don't do it yet, and um, hopefully they will, and then the two will just automatically link together. Mm -hmm. Um, sundry uh, Tom Meyer hardware. Tom Wood. Yeah, Tom Wood. That's the uh, watering cans oh, for right. um, Paul Gates. Okay. Um, Sundry's D2D International. 
Sorry. Right. Um, B2D International. Oh, that's the rubber gaskets for the jerry cans. Mm -hmm. Two more, two more. Okay. The one stop, ten pound forty one. Mm -hmm. The phone charges. Is that ah, SIM? Ah. Right, yes, it's that's yeah. um what that's the SIM for the um digital screen. Oh. You, you posted that back? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I just realised it's gone from the desk. Yeah, it's posted off to them to sort out. Mm -hmm. One more. Um. The only other one that I had, I think, was the computer software 365 11 22. Oh, it's 56, 14, 11, 20, 67, 37. And it was again just checking up. Two for the same one? Yeah, you, mm -hmm. Yeah, one, one is, um, so for Microsoft 365, we have two separate bills. One is for Karen and I, because we have full access to all the Microsoft products. And the other one is for counsellors who only have a basic licence. So they send uh, it through on two invoices every month. Licence time. Okay, I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. Do we have a proposal and a second of those? Proposal. Second. Okay. Item 157, bank reconciliation. So the bank reconciliation is a draft because um, I was waiting for more invoices which mm -hmm. will affect. Um, the balance on here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 151,000. However, short time ago, um, I finished off this thing for the end of year, and we will end up with a, um, a carryover for 158,000 because it's 150 mm -hmm. plus. Um, we've got the 80 to come back of. 4,000 something off the top of my head, and we've got nearly £3,000 in um, sales invoices we're owed. So, net position, or the basic position at the end of the year will be about £158,000. Yeah. So, you don't need to sign it because it's a draft. Brilliant. Yeah. Do we need to agree it's done? Um, yes. Yeah. Proposal and second, please. First. Second. I'll agree. <laughs> Just take it turns. Yeah. <laughs> right. Item 158 review of outstanding receipts and annual budget review. So, if we do the outstanding receipts first. Um, there's one on there, um, well, there's two on there for some outstanding rents here. Mm -hmm. um, I've given actually a couple of invoices today because they're not being received by email. I don't know why, but. Probably just as easy for me to print them off and hand them over. Yeah, because we're now going into a third month, and we need yeah. to and get I can't, that sorted out. I can't issue. Um, I can't issue this April's yet because um, under the system we're just moving away from, you have to close off the one year before you yeah. can start moving into the next year, and until. Friday, when everything gets loaded onto the new system, I can't use it, so it'll be next week, but most people are aware of that. Um, yeah, other than that, it's um, so they, all current stuff. They are, well, they're aware that there was a problem. Yes. Well, only recently, yeah. But they deemed not to do anything about it. They've got copies now, so right, okay. I'm guessing it'll be paid this week because it's normally pretty swift as soon as you get the invoice. Any other outstanding invoices you have to query? No? 
Right. Um, so the budget review. Anybody got any comments? <coughs> it's actually the, the bottom figure there of 68 mm -hmm. isn't exactly it's, yeah. it's, it's not quite because the um it's showing things in there like the cemetery chapel's roof um and it shows in there where we have an annual fund for um, play equipment tractors and everything mm -hmm. else so when we came back to it, it was a lot less than that, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. All right, if we're all happy with that one, we'll move on to the next agenda item. So, 159, to resolve to agree to recommend full council the extra spend on the Jubilee Garden. Um, that's in the reserves, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, when me and Rick were going through what reserves we were gonna have, um, we came up with some figures, um, which is in the reserves policy, one of which was a proposal of £3,000 for the Jubilee Garden, which will give us a decent amount of budget to get more planting done, possibly a bit of hard landscaping as well. I see we've got a, a meeting plan to meet down there to look at plants and things like that and I think the whole landscaping and sustainable planting mm -hmm. will be the success of that, that yeah. garden area. In order to achieve that and have to have the impact we want, which I believe, if I've got it right, is more than instant. Mm -hmm. This garden's going to be an instant and it's going to be our mm -hmm. celebration of the Jubilee. <clears throat> That's when we need that money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with regards to that sort of amount mm -hmm. we should be able to accomplish what we set it set out to do. Well that'll be three thousand pounds that's in the reserves and we have got money budgeted for this financial year and we're for Jubilee Garden as well. So <coughs> yeah. hopefully that will at least get a good start on it. And then we've also got the possibility that we may get some funding via a application that we put in. Mm -hmm. So that will be, I think that the voting for that starts shortly, doesn't it? Yeah. They sent out an email about that, mm -hmm. so we should oh, know yes. about that fairly soon, hopefully. We must start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll have to double check the dates. Yeah. Right, do we have a proposal and second for that? I'll propose. Mm -hmm. Second. I'll agree. Item 160 to resolve to recommend for council the updated reserves policy subject to change due to awaited invoices. <laughs> so there will be, I think, a little bit more in the pot. Um, it's always good news. Mm. So um, we've got quite a few items in the reserves um, that have been proposed. Does anybody have any questions on it? Yeah. I'll just say it's a very interesting read. Whoever's put the work into that, well done to them. Um, I think it's very in depth and it's probably a lot to absorb. I just hope that people take the time to read that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's some, some good um, points in there. Right, so yeah, there's quite a few projects that are um, budgeted for that we've managed to put into reserves from the surplus from this year, so that's good. Um, and that won't affect our budget for next year. So, do you have a proposal and second there for the reserves policy? I'll propose. Yeah. Second. Was it my turn? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item 161 to discuss and resolve to recommend to full council the way forward regarding rent diesel purchases. Right. So, we need diesel in our diesel tank, um, red diesel. However, it does sort of lend itself to be a bit of a target. The nearest place for red diesel is Texaco, is it Texaco it's called, or Watload, which is a two mile round trip from there to Market Hill, oh, sorry, two mile each way, which means they've got to have bigger jerry cans and go and collect it. But then I was talking to them 
and a day's mowing uses 15 litres roughly of fuel. Now that's quite some considerable mm. amount of money, isn't it? So, obviously it would be cheaper in bulk, I would have thought, but it's, that's the background on it. So. We always used to buy in bulk, and I don't know where we got it from, because that's why it's where it is, yeah. so that it can be delivered there. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where the nearest bulk place is. I can look back to see where we bought it from. Yeah. Because they, it normally <coughs> gets filled or half filled, or whatever, and then that keeps you going mm. through the season. Or mm. I think we should also think about the security as well. Mm. Um, especially, I just read an article about more lead theft from the church. Mm. Which, yeah. second time in two weeks, mm -hmm. um, which means city targets need to be sort of protected mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, and obviously, it's quite valuable. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a source, isn't it? And with fuel costs being as they are. Um, but yeah, I would certainly recommend that we look at someone that can supply and deliver versus the actual Jerry Camp situation. Mm -hmm. So are we proposing that we still look at supplying and delivering in bulk, but we just need to review the security of the tank? Yeah, I would mm -hmm. propose that yeah. as a way forward. So, yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. And then if we can come up with some options for security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we need to, there's, there's one or two things that could potentially work, but we need to think about what they are, but not discuss them in too much detail, <laughs> because we don't want to alert people to what they are. Yeah. So we need to come up with some solutions. Good point, they're there for a reason, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, 162 to resolve to agree to Board Council to install a timer on the board up to Coombrae. I think it was not as much time a programme, wasn't it? I think it was time, time, time yeah. Yeah, Do you want Yeah, I, I don't know how, how you, well, I mean, obviously it can be done. The programmer as such would work, but I know on our, one of our properties, the boiler actually does have a timer on it, mm -hmm. and then you are just working with the rad valves. Hmm. Because the issue that you're going to have with your thermostatic control is that you can set the the times for it to come on, and you can set the heat as to the temperature you want it to come on, but that's going to be open to manipulation a little bit, isn't it? Whereas if it's a timer. You, you, you are basically then talking about your rad valves, but then if the timer is in the boiler, then you, anybody can then change it. So the issue is we don't want it to be able to be changed by anybody, because currently the problem is that the boiler's running 24-7, yeah. because it, it's just ticking over. Once it's on, it's on. Having a mobile stat is mm -hmm. what we're looking at mm -hmm. or what we're talking about. They are absolutely fine because you can program up to seven on and off, on offs and pre-warm or whatever. But that will only work in the one room that that stat is. So say for instance, your stat is in your room, say the, your office, and that gets up to temperature. That means that will tell the boiler that it's up to temperature and everywhere else will go off, go off. Mm -hmm. um, so normally when you've got them in domestic properties because it's more open um, you know you know rooms are mm -hmm. whatever smaller or not so many of them and um, they tend to be a good scenario um, I think what Isabel's saying the actual timer on the boiler is potentially going to be the winner um, but obviously without instructions and things like that it might be difficult for people to change it, so we ought to look at both avenues of... Mm. I think if we can get some... speak to somebody that actually mm. knows... I mean, it may be best to go back to the person that installed, installed it in yeah. the first place and say, look, that we've got we've got an issue in that it's 
costs us a lot of money to keep it running constantly. We need to be able to t put it on some sort of timer system. What are our options? And see what they come up with. I mean, sorry, to, if I could just say, yeah. uh, thermostatically, when you've got multiple rooms, doors shut, it's going to be very, you know, the boiler's just going to go come on and off, and it'll be very difficult, you know. But the staff should really be in the coldest part of the building mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. properly, um, and you know that might be somewhere as far out as this. But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's the the cost of heating that's in question is not the, not so much the the on and off of the boiler because that can be sorted, but it's the actual overall mm -hmm. cost of the heat we're wasting. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, we don't know what people have got their radios set to in their rooms because we don't access individual rooms. So it may be that they've they've got theirs on full hole all day, all night, mm. and that's just churning away. I mean, we do turn all of the ones in the public areas down when we leave, but that doesn't solve the issue if somebody else has got a radiator on number five for the whole mm. of the time, does it? Mm. I think mean, the stats are a good idea, the wall mounted stuff where you just tick it up or down, but that doesn't pre warm before you get here and knock a time away. Yeah. So I think it's finding the best solution really for here. And it also means that realistically we want to set the timer, work out when's best, and then that's it. We don't want people changing it all the time no. because no. then that's going to make your bills go higher again, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. not my office. If the door's open, it's freezing. If I close that door, it gets it's to like a yeah. furnace within, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. really, really hot. Um, but then when I'm here on my own, I need to have the door open mm -hmm. so I can hear when people are coming and going. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just um, issue a jacket. <laughs> this is Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to look into different options and then uh, are we coming back to full council? Or? It is to recommend full council, so I'll try and speak to him this week. I th to be honest, I think the cost of it we probably don't need to. We don't know because I mean, ultimately it will come out of the, the property's budget mm -hmm. because we've got the budget there for doing small works anyhow. It needs to be the most effective way of controlling the heating so that we are not getting the so bills that we're getting at the moment. So Should we amend the agenda yeah. item because we can agree it at the committee, can't we, with the amount of spend it's going mm -hmm. to be, and we'll just install the most effective means of, of controlling, controlling the, the board. Board. Yeah, controlling the heating. So we're going to have a proposal and a seconder. Um, could I have a proposal on a second for the main? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. One six three to resolve to agree to recommend to board council the cost of installation of digital screen and the ongoing maintenance. <laughs> so, um, the digital screen is not yet installed. And um, we do need to redo concreting um, and then get it installed. We have had a quote for the installation, however, that probably will change dependent on because additional works have had to be done. Um, and then in terms of the ongoing maintenance, we currently have a um, SIM card that's just on page go for £10 on it for now. Um, and it's really, we'll just have to monitor that and see how much data it uses. It shouldn't use that much because it only uses it when it updates. Um, and then again, electricity, there will be a sub-meter installed into the property that we're connecting into, so we'll be able to monitor electricity. So we're just basically fairly unknown costs, but we're agreeing to the gas. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a cheeky question? Yeah. Um, did we go with the best 4G signal provider in the area because obviously I know like ZE and all those. Did we go? Did we get go with the strongest signal for that point um, as opposed to the cheapest? Because if it's someone that's not isn't using that signal, you know, they can't use that signal. Yeah, I think that's probably because we have the same amount of people that use it. Yeah, so we get the cheapest signal. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The idea was we're just going to get a page go sim currently. We could, we could change it. If yeah, to get it up and running. Yeah. 
Um, and then I was going to bring it back to PR and IT at the next meeting. We're going to review the sim because the likely thing is we'll probably go on contract, but we don't know what contract to go on yet until we know how much data it's using. There was um, the article about the 5G masks again, weren't they, in the paper? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously until we get those, we won't, we're super slow, unfortunately. I think EE is one of the better mm -hmm. for speed, but it depends on where it's positioned, so yeah. we'd have to do a bit of um, we'll do a, bit a, bit, a few speed yeah. tests or something. Like yeah, that. we've just got a SIM card at the moment to get it up and running, and then we can be reviewing that in PRMIT to make sure we get the best option. So we've got costume proposed to full council then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Think very exciting. Well done. Can't wait to see it. That's brilliant. Mm, can't wait to see it. So do we have a proposal or a second then? Thank you. I agree. Okay. So item 164, to resolve to agree to recommend full council the lighting at Coombe Road Chambers. Now I believe that was to yeah. replace um, the strip lighting with LED spotlights, mm -hmm. shoot up, yeah. And um, again, reducing the electricity costs. <coughs> so, is this in all areas, or is this just in our main areas? Um, I mean, it's mainly your office initially, isn't it? Uh, yeah, in here, I think the kitchen and the mm -hmm. So the public areas and mm -hmm. yeah. your offices, yeah. Yeah. Yes. There is some um, quite adaptive lighting for offices, and they've got the empty blue light in them, mm -hmm. which makes it, it takes the strain out of your eyes when you're working and stuff. It's well worth looking into, but mm -hmm. not um, not expensive, but um, some good alternatives. All right. So if we can look at if we can get an initial assessment of what we're going to need from mm -hmm. one electrician. And then, depending on what that comes back as, we can then go out if we need to go mm. out for more quotes. Yeah. If it's sorry, if it's to do it back in there, if it's one, if one bit's done at a time and it's within budget, then we should really crack on them mm. and do them. Supposed to keep coming back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. <coughs> I propose that we get quotation from mm. one. Mm -hmm. Um, for all of the areas, and then we can break it down if we need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. About the safes, because if you go in and out them in lots of um, the big safe, a lot of times yeah. in one day, I think mm. these cost a lot, don't they? To start and stop. Mm. Yeah. We can include that. I mean, they can be the lowest priority, but yeah, we can mm -hmm. include them in a quote. So, are we amending the agenda item to get a quote, or are we still recommending it to full council? One recommendable council, yeah, that we're going forward with. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we'll just prep some quotes ready. Okay. Second up, please. Thank you. I'll agree. Yeah. 165, result recommend full council to open a nationwide business saver account. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to explain why? <laughs> so, um, this was Rick's suggestion because at the moment we have to pay in all of our banking at Barclays in Spalding, which is somewhat a nightmare. It's such a time wasting thing, and you have to pay people mileage to go there and come back. Um, it's very kind of <laughs> Some people are going in and volunteer to do it, but it isn't ideal. And the fact that we've got Nationwide just here, it seemed sensible to open one of their saver accounts, pay all everything into that, and then once a month just do one transaction online to move it into Barclays um, or leave it there for you know savings. <laughs> But it would be a whole beach parish year, so a whole beach parish council. Okay, I'll, account. I'll yeah. put my hand there. <laughs> um, I think we'll struggle, personally, um, under money laundering regulations, etc., to open a savings account up nationwide and pay numerous checks into a savings account. It's going to be very tricky because some personal customers have problems actually paying cash into their own accounts and have to prove where it's come from, etc., etc. <laughs> 
if anything, I would probably recommend looking at a bank that where you, you could do that transaction with the post office. So there's plenty of, um, um, we do all our business banking at the post office, um, and maybe even to speak to our existing Barclays Bank to let them know of our struggle and see whether they can issue a card that will enable the payments to go in at the post office, which are not actually debit cards, because we've all got, all signatures on the account have got a authentication card. Mm. Um, it might be worth speaking to Barclays first before we go down this route with full council to see if they will issue a card that will allow payments to go in. And as we do, we pay cash in with our, with our business card, um, checks, you fill in your payment slip, Mm. with your checks in an envelope, drop it off and the next day it's in your account. So I think we're going to battle with the nationwide to do that and I would suggest that we first of all check what alternatives we have with Barclays before reaching out to somewhere like the post office. Do you want to amend the agenda item? Not really. <laughs> I'll just give you my opinion. <laughs> um, is it about Joe the Comic? I think I think what you're saying is that if we can look at other options that we can do without having to open another account, but if we even if we agree if we do recommend to agree to open a nationwide business saver account, if there is no other option, then at least yeah. we've got it already done. So we can crack on with it rather than having to bring it back again. Mm -hmm. So that then it is an option. So we look at our options that are available to us, and if that is the best option, then that's what we're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't want to jump back on the same question again, but have we actually checked that Barclays will open a Holbridge Parish Council business savings account? Nationwide, yes, we're expecting to see them, and they will. Yes, he said they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll come back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, amend to add other options as well. So, for the amendment, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the proposal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll agree. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, mm -hmm. item 166 to discuss and resolve to agree to recommend to Board Council to have polling cards if an election happens in May. So you've got the general cost of an election, but it is down to us as to whether we issue polling cards or not. Um, do you want me to read out the little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've been advised by SHGC that we do not legally need polling cards if we have an election. We cannot advise us either way. However, when Sutton Bridge had an election last November, they decided not to have voting cards and there was considerable backlash as people said they were not aware of an election. The cost would be in the region of £1,500 to £2,000. <laughs> I personally do not see the need for polling cards. It's going to cost us enough to have an election that we don't need in the first place, so I don't see any point in spending yet more money on sending polling cards out when you're going to get a very low turnout anyhow, and I don't think it's going to make any difference. We've got social media, we've got ways of getting the information out there. Quite frankly, if people are going to vote, they're going to vote, and if they're not, they're not. It doesn't matter whether they get a card through the door or not. And we're we're going to get backlash or whatever happens, so we'll just we'll go with it. Yes. Okay, so I will be the defence, if you like, <laughs> um, um, and say that the public have um, successfully called for the election for the seat. Um, and in a way, I feel that we should be delivering what it is that they're asking, which is the, if, if it gets to that point, the election that they one which will mean polling cards be issued. Sorry, Isabel. Mm -hmm. um, I do get your point. Uh, when we have got um, ample seats to fill for plenty of people to pull an election for just one of those seats, when we'll then be able to co-opt any extras onto the area. Yeah, I can see the point from Isabel. But 
you know, at the end of the day, the members of the public have spoken with regards to, or certain members of the public have. Um, so I would say that we need to send out the polling cards to demonstrate our support that that is their wish. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. <laughs> I have to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I've got two different opinions there. I think you're going to have to just take it to full council and they're going to have to decide. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we, we can't make a decision here as to one no. way or another. No. So you did get a casting vote. Oh, I mean, well, that's put me in difficult position. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you two. Um, um, okay, so, so if we change the amend the agenda item, sorry, I'm doing this again, to take decision. And full council. To full council, yeah. And that's best. Close it for that, please. Second, I think. Agreed. And then. Yeah, we'll agree. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 167, items for discussion and agenda item requests. Anything now? Or? Not for me. I think there'll be items coming mm -hmm. back on here because we've got, yeah, mm -hmm. so not yeah. quite happy. Whereby people are not available until after six, is it? No. So we move. What time do you want to move it forward? So we say four thirty. That's fine with me. And then we and then we can review it depending on the situation after May, because it depends on who's on finance, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Do we have to agree that or? Um. Yes, 